It's with great pleasure that I have the privilege to introduce Queen Anne's County Economic and Tourism Development Director, Heather Tonelli. <laughs> nope, you just sit tight. <laughs> Heather has been with the county since November of 1991 and has worked endless hours supporting our business community during these very, very difficult past 18 months. While at the same time, she was rebuilding her team. That's really an accomplishment when you think about it. You just started the position, a pandemic hits, everything gets shut down, and she is powering through and then rebuilding a great team. Very good, Heather. Heather will be sharing her insight, news, and the first opportunity for the business community to check out the county's new branding platform, which is way overdue, so this is exciting. The chamber is proud to incorporate some new branding of our own material by adding the slogan, hold it, are you ready? It's called, Where Sure Business Begins. Please help me welcome Heather Tonelli, the Director of Queen Anne's County Economic and Tourism Development. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone. It's so great to see actual faces and not see you all on the computer screens. And can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> you know, I can't get it to work. You're on mute. You know, we don't have to say that today. Hopefully, we don't have to get back to that. Got pretty good at it, though. Um, I'd like to take a minute to, to thank uh, the Queen Anne's County Chamber, Linda and Tracy. They have been my partners through this whole thing um, from the very beginning, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, I'd also like to introduce my team. We're missing one today, but we have Lisa Gallo, Connie Dean, Angela Hordert, and Rebecca Lepter. They, uh, several of them are brand new, but um, as Eva mentioned, when we first, when I first started in November, and it was 2019, <laughs> she said 1991. I'm like, I wasn't even born then. That's not true. <laughs> uh, we did, we did have a crunch in our, and a, a, a several people had moved on, and for a while it was just Lisa and I, and it was during the pandemic. But we buckled down um, and made it happen and um, just really proud of what we did. Today, I'm going to, um, if I can get my, there we go. I'll get, I'm not very technically savvy with this thing, so bear with me a little bit. Today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, economic development, kind of like a 101 view. Um, I know that to me, it's really exciting. <laughs> to you all, maybe not so much some of the stuff, so I'm going to try to read the crowd and uh, maybe ask a few questions to, to keep it a little dynamic because I know that the topic can sometimes be. Um, not very interesting for those that aren't interested in economic development. And then we're going to look at, you know, where we were, how we handled the pandemic, and where we, where we see our future. And then last but not least, which I think most of you are here for, is the unveiling of our new branding. We've been working on that for quite a while and uh, approved by the commissioners, and we're starting to roll it out, which you see over there, and you see our new wrapped vehicle. So <coughs> very excited. So the mission of economic development is, and you, many of you probably know, is to create jobs, increase our tax base, and even more importantly, make sure the quality of life is the best that it can be for our residents and future residents and for our businesses and, and, our, and our visitors. That, that's the main goal. Um, and so I'm going to walk you through a little bit of that. So I thought it'd be interesting to give, as I said, kind of a 101 view to look at us um, from a land base and in various different ways so um, that you understand who we are. Uh, this is a map of Queen Anne's County um, and it's by zoning type and you can see it's primarily green and, and what do you think the green is? Ag, countryside, forest. Uh, we're 237,000 acres, we're 333 square miles, 414 of that is shoreline, over 56% is zoned ag, and when you add that countryside and that forest um, land, we're in that 80% range. So primarily from, you know, Queenstown up, we're ag, um, 
and green space. The county has preserved 83,903 acres and has a goal of 100,000 acres um, as soon as they can. And there's people in line ready for that. As many as you, of you all know that if you live on Kent Island or in Graysonville or Queenstown, um, it's, it's completely different than what it is if you turn the corner and you go north up 213, you're gonna see different things. Over 63% of our population lives from Stevensville, Chester, Graysonville, Queenstown. That's also where our major um, priority funding areas are, where our growth areas. Um, those other areas would include places up north, like your municipalities and towns, and there's some spots along the way. Um, you can see just this little map here, or it's probably hard to see, but maybe a little bit of the pink, just to kind of give you the place of what we're talking about. And those people that live there um, are highly educated, or, or citizens that live there, their median income is in the $102,000 range, and I'll show you what it is overall for the county. Um, so, you know, when you think of these areas versus up north, we, it, it is different. Many of the, um, the businesses that are located in this sector of the county need different things than maybe the businesses up north do. The citizens are looking for different services and opportunities than uh, up north. Up north, um, you know, broadband is a big issue to make sure that we all have connectivity. Um, down in our more uh, or populated areas, they're looking at, you know, traffic as being an issue. So each, each one's different. I also wanted to give you um, an overview of our tax structure, which I think is important as we uh, look at attracting businesses to the area, residents to the area, um, even tourists to the area. They're looking at certain tax implications of effect or um, inform their decisions on whether they come here. The income tax rate for Queen Anne's County, as you all probably know, because we all pay taxes, is 3.2%. Uh, About half the counties in Ma Maryland are right there with that. The lowest one is Worcester, and that's at 2.25%. And that's on top of Maryland, so depending on how much money you make, um, you, you pay that on top of the Maryland taxes. A real pop property tax rates, which is your property tax, which you pay on your, um, your homes and businesses if you own your land, is the fourth lowest in the state. Talbot's the lowest, and Baltimore City is the, the highest at 2.2, um, So and we're at 0 0.84, so it's quite a bit of a difference there, but I just thought it'd be good for you to see that. The largest revenue source, which help, helps pay for your services that you receive, is real estate taxes. And I'll show you in a minute, that primarily comes from residential real estate. Uh, about 71 million comes from uh, the taxes collected through real estate and about 67 million of your county budget comes from income tax, both from business as well as um, personal. Uh, an another great thing when we're looking at attracting businesses besides the fact that uh, we have the fourth lowest property tax, we do not have a personal property tax, so some of you may not know what I'm talking about. But that's a tax on your um, inventory and your equipment. Some municipalities in, in Queen Anne's County have that tax, but um, only a few. So that makes us different. If you look on the western shore where I was before in Prince George's County, the county as a whole has a, property a personal property tax, as well as all the different municipalities. So that can make a big difference when you're moving somewhere and you have a lot of equipment and capital expenditures um, when you decide where you're going to move. I also um, have down there, which I know you can't read because it's quite small, uh, some of our nearby competitors, you know, ones I think that businesses are looking at if they're moving to our region, and that would be uh, Talbot County. They have a personal property, t I'm sorry, a real property tax uh, of 0 0.6 and an income tax rate of 2.4, so that's lower. Um, in Delaware, they have an effective uh, average real property tax is 0.5 and Arundel's at 0.9 so um, I won't bore you with the details but I, I think we're positioned very well as far as taxes go. Um, this chart I thought was interesting to see too and I hope I'm not boring you but uh, this is the base assessment meaning what is your property assessed at to determine taxes and the only reason I'm pointing this out is I, I thought it was interesting to see that the base value 
by zoning type is 65% of the land that we have in Queen Anne's County is um, residential as far as the value goes. Uh, we have ag at 8%, commercial at 8%, um, and our commercial tax base is around 10% when I calculate it based on FY22. So we definitely have room and improvement on that. It's, it's important to grow the commercial tax base, base because commercial businesses or business in general doesn't necessarily utilize all the services that are required as compared to a, a residence or um, condos, that sort of thing. The next slide you see is uh, population trends. <coughs> the census numbers just came out and they had us just under 50. Um, so, but if you look at a lot of different uh, reporting mechanisms that we have, they have us in the 51 range, 50. So I, I listed 50,000 plus or minus is, is uh, where we're at and I have a dollar sign there by mistake, so sorry about that. Uh, but I thought it was really interesting because you hear of population growth. I've lived here all my life and there's probably several that have lived here for 20, 30 years in the room. And it's hard to remember what it was like several years ago. I wasn't born in 1970. But in 1970, we had 18,000 residents. And that was an 11% growth from when you looked at 1960. And that's a pretty significant amount of growth. So you think 1970, 18,000, and we're up to 50,000 residents right now. That is projected to continue to grow. Um, when I look at those projections, 22, 23, 25, um, based on the software that we use, the modeling, it's, it's around 5%, sometimes lower, sometimes a little higher over the next five to 10 years. So we do envision growth. Um, there's quite a few, I shouldn't say quite a few, but there are several residential developments in the pipeline that have been there for five forevers. Um, so those hopefully will come along and move forward. So I just thought that was interesting to see. Oh, sorry, I'm coming. One more. There we go. The, this is something else that I thought was uh, interesting to point out. It's, it's some population trends as compared to the nation. Uh, we have about 8,400 millennials, that's the 25 to 39. Those are um, people that are either have families, starting families. Um, we have about 18,000 uh, retiring soon. That's uh, higher than the U.S. averages. We have about 31% of our uh, current citizens that are between the ages of 45 and 64. And if you look at 45 and above, it's at 45%, so if you round that up, almost half of our population is 45 and older. Why is that important to know? Because when you look at our population, it's, um, their needs are gonna be different. A millennial is gonna have needs for school system and daycare, and uh, they're gonna be looking for a different kind of housing. You know, you get to the 55 and older, they're not utilizing our school systems, but they're more interested in health care and what opportunities we have for, you know, uh, retirement type of services and leisure activities and, and everything is going to be different. Um, racial diversity, we are primarily um, Caucasian. We, uh, if you look at us compared to the, the U.S. averages, we're, we're quite a bit below that. Um, I thought it was kind of cool to see that we have a larger percentage of veterans that live here in our county as compared to other similar areas in the U.S. And another great thing to, to tell people about if they're looking to move or start a business here is our crime rates are very low and uh, that's something to be proud of. We're a very safe place to live. Uh, this slide talks about our um, employment or labor force. Uh, you can see, uh, if you can see the, the slide there, and I know that that's kind of hard to read, but uh, we have about 26,000 people in our labor force, and about 25 of those are working. Some of our largest employers, um, in case you didn't know, I, I always think it's interesting. Chesapeake College is one of our largest employers. Um, PRS Guitars, Reeb Millwork. Um, federal resources that they can go on. We have quite a few. Uh, you'd be surprised to know that have a hundred and more, hundred or more employees. Um, I think sometimes they're kind of hidden away, and people don't realize that we have these large employers. But we're very thankful to have them. Um, 
for those of you that don't know me really well, all of a sudden as I've gotten older, I've gotten really competitive. Um, I don't mean to be that way, but I kind of do, and um, so I, I'm, I, I just don't want to be last. You know that saying, uh, Ricky Bobby, if you're not first, you're last. <laughs> I kind of feel that way sometimes, so I kind of put that passion in to what we do, and I'm constantly looking and comparing as to where, how Queen Anne's County fits in the big picture, in the state, in the nation. Um, I'm not in competition, we we're kind of in indirect competition with our, our neighbors, although we want everybody to succeed. We, we are constantly, constantly looking because as a business looks to move over, they're looking at our neighbors. Uh, when people are looking to move into our community, they're looking at our neighbors, so we need to know where we stand. This is a, a listing of real gross domestic product, how much money is brought in um, through you know, revenues, payroll, taxes, that sort of thing. And it's a listing of all the counties in, Queen, um, in the state of Maryland. And I have Queen Anne's highlighted. The one thing I wanted to point out from the competitive nature side of me is we ranked number four in 2019 for percentage of change or growth. So I thought, well, that's pretty interesting. Although we're, we're small potatoes as far as numbers go, you know, we're at $1.7 uh, billion. Um, compared to uh, Montgomery County at 84 and uh, Baltimore at 51. Um, overall, I, I just thought that that was pretty interesting to see. We might be small, but we're mighty. Uh, kind of drill, drilling down a little bit further into that, some of the industries that are um, the, the largest GDP drivers, are, uh, our government employs a lot of people. Um, the wholesale trade, manufacturing, construction. I just thought, and you'll see this trend over time as we look through these different slides, that the key industries that um, help, uh, that are key in Queen Anne's County kind of run the bar, and, and you'll see this all along. So some of the largest industries, again, as, as I said, you'll see this trend, accommodations, food service, which is tourism, uh, retail trade, construction, manufacturing. The little uh, gray dots that you'll see, maybe, if you're close up, those are the national average. So how do we compare to similar areas in the, in the nation? Um, and you can see that we have a larger um, source of retail trade jobs. Uh, as compared to national trends, a, a much larger range of accommodation and food service jobs as compared to the, the region, or as compared to the nation. We'll skip past this one. Top growing industries in Queen Anne's County. Again, accommodations, food services, manufacturing. Some um, great stories that I, I like to tell is recently we've seen, again, don't want anybody else to fail, but we're happy to have them. Some businesses moving from uh, Baltimore City over here. We've had two in the, in the last year that are at the business park. One of them is um, Itaburka, which is a food manufacturer. Um, so we're real excited to have them. We told them to tell their friends, come on over. We've got room for you. So um, we'll, we'll definitely see that man light manufacturing manufacturing number hopefully grow over time. Um, Health care, social services, um, administrative and support, uh, there's, there's quite a few growing industries that you can see. Um, I wanted to point out a couple of our key industries uh, just to give you a little bit of information. Some of this stuff has never been um, really pulled together before and we were able to, to just to start to do this. Um, I was inspired because Anne Arundel County just recently did a, sur a, a study, actually Sage Group helped him, which is Arabon Basu, if you um, know him, he's a great economist, um, to look at the maritime industry specifically and how it impacts Queen Anne's County. Um, and looking at the industries that compile that um, or the, the subcategories, I should say. You're talking about boat building. We have numerous boat dealers, and some of them are the largest in the Mid-Atlantic region. We have uh, quite a few large marinas, which we know about. You know, obviously, the seafood industry, commercial fishery, fishing, um, seafood market, seafood production, uh, water transportation, marine construction, you're thinking, you know, riprap and piers and dredging and all those kind of things come into play to affect our economy. Um, and looking at all those sectors, we have about $80 million a year that's pumped into Queen Anne's County from those different sectors. 
And this is direct impact. Um, we were unable at the time to do the indirect and the induced to look at like a multiplier effect. But I just thought that was really interesting to see. We have about 852 boats registered in our county. Um, so of course the competitive side of me was like, that sounds so low. So I kind of looked around at other counties. The next largest one on the shore outside of Dorchester was um, Talbot and they were at in the 600 range. I also found it very interesting that Anne Arundel County has about 33,000 uh, registered boats. And I was like, how can that be? And um, when I thought about it a little bit more, that's the closest point to the, the bay from the western shore so I'm sure a lot of you know uh, people are registering their boats there have their boats there in Queen Anne's County we have about 40 marinas private municipal and commercial and about 3,000 boat slips so you think for transient boaters that's almost the same as a hotel room they're coming they're staying they're spending money at our restaurants and they're paying for the slips so um, I just thought that was kind of cool to see. Uh, next, agriculture is another key industry. Um, and I've tried to put it in a block here. There's two recent studies that were done, one in 2018 by the Beacon Group, looking at resource-based industries. And the other most recent one that's always done every few years is the Ag Census, and that was done in 2017. But based on the information that we obtained from both of those, uh, the direct output to the state related to agriculture for Queen Anne's County is about $157 million to the state's economy um, and about $213 million in overall impact, which is pretty big. Um, it's estimated based on that USDA farm census that each farm in the county, we had about 483 at the time, produces $2.5 million in income. And uh, the overall, the assets of all the farms in the county is estimated in 2017 at 1.2 billion. So a big industry that's very important to us. So this is a, um, sorry about the outlook being cut off. Uh, I wanted to get in some more detail as tourism is another huge industry for us. Um, in 2020, there were 6,181 jobs in Queen Anne's County. Um, in the tourism industry. That's 36% above the average. Um, the average job earnings in tourism, uh, based on our research, is about $42,000, which is, an, uh, and it's expected to continue to go up because, you know, we've got a new hotel coming, new restaurants coming, um, so we definitely see that rising over time. Um, the, the gross regional product for tourism, and that's all industries combined, is at $547 million a year. So that, that's a huge indicator for the county. And I just made a note that um, I was truly inspired by our tourism businesses during the pandemic. Um, not that all businesses were not impacted, they absolutely were, but this industry was most significantly hit as many of them had to shut their doors. Um, you know, our restaurants were closed for some time. I've tried to put that past, so you don't think about it very much, but it wasn't that long ago when we were having to get to go, to go food and that was the only way you were gonna be able to eat out. Um, you know, I remember going to the jetty and, and getting the fish taco meals and the um, orange crushes to go, which were really good. So it was neat to see how people transition, or how businesses transitioned, you know, and how they made it work and how they survived, but they fought hard. They did what they could to get back open, and now they're thriving. I, I think um, also what helped Queen Anne's County during the, the pandemic was is we have so many outdoor, open air kind of restaurants. So that had us stand out as compared to other areas. If you look at Baltimore City, who's still struggling and still dealing with, not that we're compared to them, but um, still, they're still struggling uh, with their restaurant industry. We're, we're you know, we, we lost a, a few, but overall they, they were able to succeed um, and we're thankful that our hotels struggled. You know, pretty much any, any place that had to be inside um, was greatly affected by the pandemic, but we appreciate all that they did to stay open. This just is from the state of Maryland, the total visitor spending. You can see the trend, 19 is going up because of the pandemic they saw a 37% decrease. 
decrease in visitor spending that is anticipated to increase over time. We expect most of the our visitors, our tourists that are coming, are coming for the day, the weekend, uh, maybe a week long, but they're, they're traveling locally. Um, we, we have seen some from all over uh, the states come visit us, but international travel is going to take some time to come back. We're just thankful that we have the assets to be able to um, host lots of great outdoor experiences. This is Queen Anne's County as far as tourism goes. Is it 20? I'm at 20 minutes? Oh boy, oh boy. I'll hurry up, I'm sorry. I only thought this would be 20, but then I get sidebarred a lot. So Queen Anne's County, uh, this is the visitor levels, the number of visitors. You can see there were uh, 403,000 people that came to visit us in 2019. That was almost dropped in half to about 255. Um, many were spending, the. Uh, it was either day or overnight. Most, 57% were staying during the day. I'm going to go through this a little bit. Another key thing, again, my competitive side point uh, coming out is um, unemployment rates. That's, a, that's an important indicator for um, economic developers. Back when the pandemic hit, um, the state got as high as 10 percent, and we were right behind them. Um, however, we click quickly recovered again because we were able to open our doors in, in some ways where some other areas um, in the region and in the state were not able to open their doors. Uh, currently, we are at 4.3%, which is the lowest. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, <laughs> we got to be number one. So we are tied with um, Carroll County, I believe, and Howard County, I believe, are the two. The state is at 5.8%, so we're below where the state is. Um, and that trend has been steadily going down, which is down is a good thing for unemployment. Um, so we're, we're really happy to see that. Um, just this is the last thing I'll say about our um, COVID response is our county, um, our Queen Anne's County Economic and Tourism Development has given out over four million loans and grants individually. We did it in-house. Um, it's about 331 grants. Uh, glad we were able to do it. Um, this is Mr. Lynch. He's one of the head boat captains. He received one of the grants. Um, and we tried to take pictures and do a lot of advertising on what we were doing, but we just got so busy giving the money out, we didn't have time for the pictures. Uh, we were really proud of our efforts uh, working with our stakeholders like the Chamber and, and others to make sure that we got the latest information to the businesses because it was changing daily. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to our health department and our health care workers and our first responders. They went beyond the call of duty for sure within the county and um, I'm just really proud of what they did. Uh, the last thing I'll say is looking forward. These are quotes I've heard before, so they're not my <laughs> words, but I don't know where they came from. If you're not growing, you're dying. So we need to look to our future to say, uh, where can we grow? You know, over time we see our population trends growing, but once that um, housing levels kind of level out, we, we need to make sure we're growing at some point so that we don't become stagnant. Um, whether that's in a business world or whether that's in the residential side of things or whether it's in tourism. Um, and then I said, if you don't embrace change, you'll be overlooked or left behind. Again, not my quote, but something that I've kind of always thought about. It's really important that we um, are constantly looking to change. You know, our businesses are a great role model for that. If you uh, look at how they were able to pivot um, during the pandemic, um, Harbor Sales made the little plastic cover, you know, they transitioned and made those little plastic coverings between the registers and the individuals. Um, NRL did ventilators, many of our distillers changed the hand sanitizers, and there's so many more um, stories of resiliency and pivoting because you either change and move forward or you're, you know, you're left behind, especially during times like that. Uh, three things that I, I wanted to point out, th I call them our customers, three, the ones that we always look at and try to help promote the county to. Um, housing, our you know, residents moving in, our median house, housing price is at 421000 Our supply is low, demand high, I think everybody knows that. Um, 
you know, we need to look at over five to ten years, what's that going to look like? Where are people going to be able to move? Where do they want to move? Um, our visitors, there's definitely opportunities for growth there. There's still less impact on our overall infrastructure. And as you saw, they have a great impact on our economy. Um, and they support our major employment sectors. And I think a lot of our residents that live here that don't want to see a lot of growth, this is a great kind of medium uh, middle of the road because our visitors come, they stay, they spend lots of money, and then they go home. Um, so I think that it's a win all the way around. Um, and then our business attraction and expansion, we're constantly working on that. Uh, commercial property inventory, we're, we're currently looking at uh, kind of honing in on what opportunities we have. We had a tour with the state the other day um, and they told us that commercial property inventory is becoming more limited within the state and even in the region. So as that happens and there's less opportunity, they're going to be looking our way um, for commercial opportunities, whether it's industrial or commercial, you know, various things. But we, we want to be on board for that and better understand what the needs are and do we have that inventory. Uh, this is my last slide, I promise, on this, <laughs> on this topic. And I just put down our issues and opportunities. I, I have glass half full, so I made sure we have way more opportunities than we do issues. Um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, our traffic, as I mentioned earlier, anybody that lives, you know, from Queenstown down, and even up, up above has dealt with the, the traffic. The traffic has been around since I've been born. I was born in 1972, and I remember I had a great grandmother that lived in downtown Graysonville. We would sit on our porch on Sunday and be stuck there and not be able to leave because everybody found that back road. So it's nothing new. It's just that now we have more traffic, so it's compounded. I'm not going to say what we were yelling at the cars because that would uh, probably get me fired. But um, <laughs> I, I just remember it's always been an issue. She actually, um, a little sidebar, used to sell bologna sandwiches to the traffic that was stuck <laughs> on 50. Because I don't know whether if you all remember when we would have a bad accident, literally people would get out of the cars get their lawn chairs out because they were headed to the beach and they would sit out I remember even seeing people paying frisbee in the medians so uh, we've always had the issue um, it's just gotten a little worse and I know that they're looking for ways to remedy that hopefully in the future you know new bridge no new bridge there's both sides of that. That's going to be an issue we're going to face. Um, limited sewer capacity. If anybody's been following our comp plan, you're hearing that we have um, some limits there, and that needs to be addressed. And then overall infrastructure issues, whether it's our roads, our um, sewer capacity, our broadband, you know, those are things that we, we need to look at. Opportunities, we have a great quality of life. I told you our tax structure is pretty good compared to many places on the western shore. We have affordable commercial space. We have a great educated workforce, which I don't even think I, I got to mention. You know, quite a few of our, I think it's like 91% has a high, a high school education or higher, which is a great number to be at. We have growth opportunities in tourism and many other industries. Um, so that, that's it I'm going to say about economic development. And now the really fun part that I know a lot of you are, are anxious to hear about is our branding, um, rebranding of the county. Back in April, oh, I don't know, um, early April 20, we applied for a USDA grant. Um, to look at rebranding the county. We were successful in obtaining that grant. Um, we received $30,000 and uh, during the pandemic we were, we got that back in July, let's say. We were focused on getting grants out the doors to businesses. So once we had our new marketing and destination uh, specialist, Katie Clendanu, who couldn't be here today, come on board, we were ready to get started. We put out an RFP. Uh, and thank goodness we found Chop Tank Communications. Um, and they did an amazing job um, working through the process with us. Uh, we had. Uh, focus groups, several focus groups, some of them online via Zoom and some of them in person. Uh, we tried to make sure we got a true dissect of, of all of the, the businesses and our uh, citizens and our community leaders in these groups. Um, and you talk about um, inspirational. You walked in there and 
everyone was so positive. Sure, they talked about the traffic sometimes or talked about development sometimes, but primarily they really talked about what they loved about the county, why they moved their business here, why they live here, why they want to raise their children here, and you just walked out feeling like, gosh, I'm glad I live here. And plus, it, it just gave me more ammunition to to want to go. Um, so not only did we have those individual focus groups, we did individual interviews with some of our key stakeholders, as well as had a survey that we put out, and over 300 people uh, and businesses and visitors completed those surveys. So the outcome of that is our new branding, Queen Anne's County, Maryland, where sure living begins. Um, so we're, we're real tickled with that. We feel like it really communicates communicates um, much of, of who we are. Um, I wanted to read to you, and I have to pull it out from all my papers. Um, this, this statement talks about the, the place. Queen Anne's County, Maryland, a beautiful, bountiful place, sculpted from miles of open bays, the Chester River, and winding, winding creeks by fields, farms, and forest. It is unique on the eastern shore for its connection to Maryland's mainland perpetually linked to the Western Shore's economy and geography by twin bridges spanning the Chesapeake Bay. Queen Anne's County is where eastern, the Eastern Shore begins. So we've talked about quality of life throughout our presentation today. Um, low crime rate, great place to live, to raise your kids, to retire, all that good stuff. And we feel like that um, comes across in our statement. Sorry. Some of the key things that we heard during those um, meetings that we had was people came because of the Eastern Shore, they loved Queen Anne's County because of the Eastern Shore lifestyle. Um, the allure of the water, whether, it, whether you kayak, whether you boat, whether you just want to sit beside it and have a beer and eat crabs. Um, our proximity to the Western Shore um, and anywhere on the Mid-Atlantic within a day is, is a great um, opportunity for us. Uh, it's a beautiful place. If you look over here to our um, display, <coughs> you'll see the color. This is just a picture of, of a true place, you know, Queen Anne's County, and you can see all the vibrant colors and vistas. And if you just even driving here, even in the rain, it's still beautiful. You can see the bright greens and blues. And, um, and we have a great opportunity to promote outdoor adventure. People love to come over here for outdoor opportunities. So this is the, the mark, the logo that we, we've gone with, and we have several different variations. Uh, but you can see it's a Q. We're the only county in, in Maryland with a Q, so that makes us stand out. I love the green and the blue. The green reminds me of ag and the, the green grass, and the blue reminds me of wa the water. And if you remember uh, me talking about, you know, Kent Island area versus the north, kind of bringing that all together because we are one community, we are one county, and I feel like that does that. Um, and many people, when they look at the inside of the queue, sometimes see a seedling, sometimes can see parts of the bridge, waterways, you know, you can kind of envision different things, but we really felt, um, you know, that kind of, we heard a lot about wind and water and waves, and um, we really feel like the, the cue and, and the way, the, the soft curves, that sort of thing, kind of brings it all together. The picture at the bottom left um, is what was used uh, to, as an inspiration for our color palette, which you see on the bottom. Um, and you'll see that throughout, and I, we tried to use it in the presentation today. These are just different variations for you to see, black and white. Um, we like how Queen Anne's is darkest, again, you know, competitive, want to be number one, <laughs> then county, then Maryland. <laughs> And then this has it all pulled together, Queen Anne's County, Maryland, where shore living begins. Um, and I wanted to show you some of the applications. This is, is coming. We have some work to do on um, this. If you come across the Bay Bridge over to the right, as soon as you get off going eastbound, we currently have a sign there. Uh, we're, look, we're hoping to be able to replace that once we uh, get funding in place so that it's more vibrant, people see it when they come through and, and they know this is where shore living begins. You've probably also saw that our, our presentation was where shore business begins. That's the great part about this tagline. 
<coughs> excuse me, is you can interject different words, different marketing ideas. Um, here we have where sure adventures begin, which is also on the banner over there. Where sure calls begin because we're promoting fishing, hunting. Where sure memories begin. Come on over, bring your kids, take a walk in one of our parks. Um, you can see over here where shore ventures begin, you know, bring your business over, come expand, there's great opportunity. Where shore pours begin, we have quite a few distilleries, breweries, and uh, winery here available, uh, or two wineries now. Um, and, and that's a, a new expanding opportunity for Queen Anne's County. And here's some other um, applications here. Where the Eastern Shore begins, where shore angling begins. Uh, you guys get the gist. It's just a great opportunity. From this process, we're able to develop a whole um, a future outlook as to how we move forward, how we market the county, what entices people to want to come here, whether, as we mentioned before, whether they're residents, whether they're businesses, whether they're uh, visitors. Um, we're able to encompass everything. Our, our overall goal was for this to be a countywide branding and not just an economic development and tourism tool. Uh, we really feel that over time our different departments will implement this as well as, you know, countywide and we're hoping for others as the chamber I know is, is going to be implementing some of our branding components and style guide into their marketing. So we're really excited about that. Um, again, I'd like to thank Chop Tank for uh, your services. You have been a great help and um, I love the process and super motivated to keep on going now. Um, yeah, I want to thank the USDA for their funding. Without them, that would not be possible. And um, that's it. <laughs>